Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna be using samples of real analog paint strokes with all kinds of nice color variation and texture to create some custom typography. Mixing things up a little bit in this video, I'm gonna be working in Adobe Illustrator, specifically using the brush tool in Illustrator, which works in a fundamentally different way than the brush tool in Photoshop, for example, but that's exactly what allows us to create a fundamentally different kind of brush effect. I know some of you guys are more comfortable with Illustrator than others, so I'll at least try to address some of the Illustrator basics if you're just getting started. So this is a beginner friendly technique, but the method we're going to use also opens up all kinds of advanced possibilities, not just with paintbrush effects, but with light streaks and typography made of bones and swords and all kinds of stuff. So we'll take a quick look at that as well. Let's go ahead and get started here in Illustrator. And I'm going to start by opening up the brushes panel and importing some brushes that I created that I'll share with you guys. So I'm going to go open brush library, other library and load up these color brush strokes. And that should give you a panel that looks something like this. Then I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool, select one of these brush styles and just make a few strokes here and we'll take a look at how this thing works. So pretty cool effect right out of the gate, kind of self-explanatory. I'm just sketching some lines and they're getting this paint brush stroke effect applied to them as I go. But understanding the way that Illustrator is generating and displaying this effect is important. If I hit V for the select tool and I select some of these shapes, you'll see these little blue lines or these paths. Now these paths are what the brush tool really created. Almost everything in Illustrator is made up of paths and then the paths have a style applied to them. In this case, it's this paintbrush style. But all these tools up here are just various ways of creating and manipulating the paths themselves. Even a shape like a circle is a path. It's just a closed path, meaning it's gone all the way around and met back up with its starting point. But the brush tool just happens to be a tool that creates a path and automatically applies a brush style to it. But you could always create a path using something like the rectangle tool and then apply a brush style to it just by clicking on one of these brushes. Now when a path has a style like this brush effect applied to it, we can also click on different brushes and change the appearance of it. But getting a feel for working with paths is one of the most essential things in Illustrator. There are a few shortcuts that I'll put up here if you're just getting started. You've got Command or Control H for hide, that's gonna hide or show your paths. Command or Control Y is outline view where you can view the paths alone in sort of a wireframe mode that can be useful when things get a little bit busy. To select and edit paths, the shortcut V, of course, is the standard selection tool, the little black arrow. With this, you can select and transform entire paths but its companion is the letter A, that's called the direct selection tool, but I just think of these as the black arrow and the white arrow. The black arrow selects entire paths, the white arrow selects the individual points that create the path. These are called anchor points. These anchor points determine the shape of a path. For curvy lines, the points are gonna have these little handles that you can move around sort of control the shape of the curves. You start to get a feel for anchor points pretty quickly just by experimenting a little bit in Illustrator. So we've got our paths here and these brush styles applied to the paths. There are a lot of default brushes in the program, but they're almost all vector style brushes, meaning when it comes down to it, these brush styles are also themselves made up of paths. But these colored paintbrush strokes that we're using here are not vector elements at all. They're actually little photographic images of paintbrush strokes that I've brought in from Photoshop. And Illustrator will actually accept an image as a brush style. So what it does is it takes this little image and basically just warps it along the path. It's a pretty simple idea that ends up working surprisingly well when what we're doing is just warping an image of a paintbrush stroke along a path. So let's run through just a few useful guidelines that I think will help you get the most out of this technique. Number one, when you're using the brush tool or the pen tool, however you're creating paths, you're gonna want them to be a length that is sort of proportional to the brush sample. So if this is the brush sample we're using and we wanted to, for example, create the number eight, well, I could create the entire shape in one single long stroke, but that's gonna stretch this relatively short brush stroke along the entire length of the path, and we're really starting to see that stretching happening. So it's probably gonna be better to create this character using two separate circles so that the paint strokes are only half as long. Additionally, things can get a little bit funny when you try to take a sharp corner with a path, and there's really no good way to take this linear sample and make it go around a sharp corner. Things get particularly bad when you get into angles that are greater than 90 degrees. So with something like the letter B, you're gonna to wanna to take this corner right here as two different strokes rather than trying to jam that path around this sharp corner. 
Next, when you're working with images as brushes, the scale that you're working at makes a huge difference in how Illustrator performs. Now the stroke size here is gonna control the thickness of the brush, sort of the scale of the effect. And you're really gonna to wanna to work with these brushes at a size of more or less one point, even if that means you gotta be zoomed way in on your document while you work. It actually doesn't affect the resolution of the brushes. As you can see, even at just one point, we still have all this nice detail in the brush. What you do not wanna do is be working zoomed all the way out and say, well, I want the brush to be bigger, so I'll just crank the stroke size up to 10 points. However, Illustrator is working under the hood. It does not like that at all. You're just gonna end up freezing up the program. So better to work at more or less one point and just zoomed in. If you've got some brush work that you like, you're kind of finished working on it, but you need it to be larger to incorporate it into a design or something, you can always copy paste from Illustrator to Photoshop. And even though it pastes in at a small scale by default, if I scale it up when I paste it, all the detail is still there. Or if you need to scale things up in Illustrator, you can first use Object Flatten Transparency. That's gonna convert all the paths and brush strokes to basically flat images. As you can see now in outline mode, all the paths are gone. I can no longer make any edits, but this gets treated now like a regular flat image. Illustrator can scale it up and has no problem rendering it. However, that does composite everything with these white background boxes, which are a little bit of a nuisance. Now the way to get around that is to again use Photoshop. So I'm gonna back up and instead copy paste into Photoshop as pixels and scale it up when I place it, then copy paste that right back into Illustrator. A Little bit of a roundabout way to do things, but we get the same result. We can scale this up and down in Illustrator, but without those weird white background boxes. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about controlling the brush tool and trying to get some nice looking brush strokes. Now, first of all, if you have a tablet, that's probably gonna help with your typography. Also, it's supposed to be good for carpal tunnel, but for me, it's actually the other way around. My wrist gets really cramped when I use a tablet, so I'm just using the old-fashioned wired mouse here, not traditionally considered a very good calligraphy tool, but I will tell you what really helps, and that is double-clicking on the brush tool icon and setting this fidelity value all the way to smooth. I'd rather not have too much fidelity in my shaky mouse-drawn brush strokes, and the smooth setting really helps to simplify the paths. I'm not a calligrapher by any means, but I do love typography, so I'm just doing my best to use my own judgment and kind of my own handwriting here, and just experiment a little bit, but I'm also relying very, very heavily on the undo command. While I'm sketching things out, especially with the brush tool, I just hang out and attack that undo button. Then once I've got shapes that I think are on the right track, maybe there are a few places to kind of move things around, scale or transform them a little bit, and then maybe adjust a few of the anchor points. Now, in some cases, you might start to notice the repetition in the details of these brush samples, which is gonna give away the illusion that something's actually done by hand. So a few of these brushes have different styles that sort of go together. So we can randomly select some of these lines and use an alternate brush. On the brushes that don't have alternates, another thing we can do is select a few paths and reverse the path direction. That's gonna flip around the way the brush sits on that path and just helps create a little bit of variation. Here's another thing that you might notice when you really get into the details using this tool. Illustrator does not actually do a great job at compositing. It looks like the brushes probably get matted with white and then masked out again. So there's kind of this inevitable white ghosting on the edges of the brushes. That's gonna be more apparent on a darker colored brush. One thing we can do to try to address this is to change the blending mode of the strokes. So if I select all of these strokes and then click on the word opacity in the properties panel, it's a little bit hard to find the blending modes in Illustrator, but probably the most subtle option here is going to be to change the blending mode to darken. And as you can see, that pretty much eliminates that halo effect. It's a little bit of a trade-off because now the brush is maybe not entirely opaque in all the right areas, but for the most part, that actually works pretty well. And you can even set the brush tool to darken mode so that it creates the strokes set to darken by default. Okay, well that's kind of the jumping off point with these brushes, but it is just a starting point. Let me show you how to create your own brushes, and I think there are just so many different directions you can take this. So these brushes were made from photos that I took. I just had a field day creating paint brush strokes, then photographed them and keyed out the background, and I ended up with something like this in Photoshop. Now this image is about 3,000 pixels wide. Illustrator, however, accepts a maximum of about 1,500 pixels to create a sample with. So I'm gonna size this image down to 1500 pixels wide and just select all, copy, and paste this into Illustrator. 
Now, those actual pixel dimensions are important, maxing out at about 1500 pixels, but just as important is the size of this sample, the way that it's placed in Illustrator. However this is placed in your document, Illustrator is gonna consider this a one point stroke. And by comparison, if I select this very first default brush in Illustrator and create a stroke, this is actually a nice baseline for a one point brush width. So what we wanna do is scale this sample down to be really at very most the width of this default brush stroke. And there's really no harm in even fairing a little bit on the smaller size. Then I'm gonna drag the sample right into the brushes panel. That's gonna give us a few options for different types of Illustrator brushes. We can always get into those in other videos. Everything we've been looking at today is using the art brush style. The art brush is the one that's gonna stretch your sample along a path. There are a few different ways to do that. Generally, this one that's selected by default stretch to fit stroke length is gonna be the most straightforward. So I'll hit okay, and now we've got a new brush sample to experiment with. Now, paint brush strokes are kind of a natural direction to go with this tool, but you can actually use just about anything as a brush. So let's try taking a femur bone, and I'm gonna clip out the background in Photoshop, size this down to be about 1500 pixels wide, and then just copy paste into Illustrator, scale it down in Illustrator to be a reasonable size for a one point brush, and drag this into the brushes panel. Now, in this case, I'm gonna use one of these special art brush options, the one called stretch between guides, because I don't mind if the middle part of this bone gets stretched way out of proportion. What this option will do is it'll keep the ends of the bones in correct proportion and do all the stretching between the guides. So let's create this brush and give it a try. That's a pretty fun effect. And with the stretch between guides option, notice that even with a really long brush stroke, the ends of these bone shapes don't get stretched out at all. So that can be kind of a useful option. I've been having a lot of fun experimenting with creating brushes. It was kind of hard to figure out where to even stop in this video. It's pretty fun to see what you can come up with, but that's it for now. Kind of exciting to get out of Photoshop and into Illustrator. I know some of you guys are less comfortable working in this vector space, but there's really so much cool stuff that it can do. Maybe we'll get into more of it in the future. I'll include a link below to download these brush presets for free. Hope you enjoy. More on the way from the Texture Labs channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.